Greetings fellow Vita fans, this is James with PS Vita at 2am, coming at you once again with another exciting video. And if you're new here and love everything PlayStation Vita, don't forget to subscribe. Well, color me surprised, we're actually getting a decent amount of PlayStation Vita news in this first week of May. Something tells me that this month is going to be a lot more busy than we first initially thought. At least it's looking like that so far anyway. But you guys are here for the Vita news, are you not? You are right. And being that's what you're here for, let us get on to the first tidbits of info regarding the handheld that could, as it's an official name that I'm naming it. Oh, and let me know which tidbits of news interested you the most down in the comments section. First up in our bit of news here was a story I happened to stumble across on Yahoo, which kind of touched my heart a little bit. Not physically, but you know, philosophically. This article comes from Tashi Mashazuki? I think? And the headline goes like this, Tiny Game Studio finds Nintendo stardom through Sony's obsolete device, which I think we all know what they're referring to. I'm saying that as I shake my fist angrily. It's a tale about how the PlayStation Vita helped this dev find stardom, basically, through the PlayStation Vita. For Toru Kawakatsu, this man's four-person game studio dubbed Petit Di Potio? I swear every single video has to have something that I have trouble pronouncing. Started work on an adventure game called Nozia for the PlayStation PlayStation Vita portable console back in 2015. And just so I don't force you to look at text the whole time during this segment, uh, here's some gameplay. The Vita was already ailed back then and Sony Corp had stopped announcing sales numbers for it. But Kawakatsu and his friends didn't waver. Last summer, three months after the Vita was officially discontinued, they released their finished work on a zombie platform, which yes again, they're talking about our Vita. Man insults all around. Warmly received by players and recognized by reviewers. Now keep in mind that this game is currently exclusive to Japan, that's what they're talking about here. The game however got Nintendo's attention, which may not have happened had they not completed this on a more congested front. Meaning competition and the like. Nausea Switch Edition went on sale in Japan on Thursday. Now I will have a link down to the article below where you guys can read the rest of this stuff. I don't want it to go too long into it, but the long and short of it is is that this guy got stardom for Nintendo because of the PlayStation Vita, and now things are looking up for him. And if you're wondering about the game that he worked on, Nausea, which I believe the G is silent, I'm not 100% not, not sure about that, it's sort of a cross between Danganronpa, Zero Escape, and Death Mark. It's a visual novel type horror thriller game, and as you can tell from the gameplay, it looks to be pretty messed up. Now, although this game is stuck in Japan, unfortunately, for the PlayStation Vita, we can always hold out hope that they grace us with a fan-translated English patch sometime in the future. This way, we could play it completely in our own native language. And nothing can truly be more beautiful than that. Oh, and that was a not-so-subtle hint to any hackers that might be watching. One of my favorite things about doing PlayStation Vita news is trophy leaks. Glorious, unadulterated, beautiful trophy leaks. Well, actually, just scratch that. Some of the characters on here do look like they would commit adultery. And we have one this week from none other than Demon's Tear. Plus, this is a game that I had talked about back a few videos back. Link in the description below if you missed out on those videos. This recently got a physical release from PlayAsia, but now we've got its uh, trophies popping up here. Which can only mean one thing. The digital is going to be on the horizon very soon. Now, the game is teetering from being shipped either in June or July. Although, we're going to have to see how things go with that because of the whole global pandemic issue, perhaps you just might have heard of it. But I got a feeling that it's going to be launching probably sometime in June, maybe May if we're lucky, who knows. But trophy leaks, they are beautiful. Oh, oh, oh. I love talking about this dude. Harris Magique, uh, you can tell me how badly I butchered that down in the comment section, made a post in April, I know I'm a tad late with this, saying this on Twitter. In April 2020, I am focusing more on improving AI and doing more programming on weapons and its related systems in the game. I also plan to experiment with SFX. Continuing modeling, texture mapping, and cutscene animation. Now for those of you who have may not heard of this individual, he is basically a one-man army trying to give us a 3D, yes I said 3D, tactical RPG for the PlayStation Vita. And his game is called Alt Bosnia. He's doing this completely pretty much on his own. So the guy is definitely getting a salute by me. Yet another salute you probably can't see. But trust me when I say, I am doing it. Now, of course, since we have no clue as to when we'll be actually seeing gameplay footage for this game other than just past screenshots, or when it's going to be releasing, the guy is certainly not giving up, and this is one ambitious project that he's working on, and I am wishing him all the best on his continued success.
Alright, another game to make you tingle with excitement. Game Phase has announced, we are so excited to announce, I just said that, Thy Sword is coming to consoles. Or Thy Sword? Thy Sword is coming to consoles. Epic news, thanks to everyone who has supported us and to Rodalaka Games, that most beautiful company that continues to support us and our community for making it happen. And they posted this on May 1st, 2020. Hey, I'm not actually late with something for once. And as we can see from Thy Sword's gameplay right now, it's a pixelated... Mm, I want to kind of say it reminds me of Rastan again, and that seems to be happening as of late a lot lately on the PlayStation Vita. But yeah, it's a hack and slash pixelated sword fighting game. I guess it has a crossbow too, because one of the characters has like a crossbow, so I'm assuming a crossbow is going to make an appearance. A crossbow better be making an appearance. I swear, devs, if I don't see any crossbow action in this, then I guess I'll just have to learn to live with it. But I won't be happy though. No release date yet for this one, which is also something I'm not very happy about. You guys out there remember when I talked about Emma Lost in Memories, which is something I can relate to quite a bit? It had a physical release, yet again, like much like with Demon's Tear, through Play Asia and sold out in approximately two days, with a thousand physical copies being manufactured, which is very, very fast for a Play Asia release, darn you scalpers. Well, its digital release is finally here! Or it's gonna be here, you know, very soon. Emma Lost in Memories is a 2D puzzle platformer game in which all the platforms and walls start disappearing progressively as you touch them. And I bet you don't even need over-the-counter pills in order to accomplish this. Joe oh crap, did I say that out loud? Think, strategize, run, jump, and feel in a surreal and poetic world where everything fades away. And you will be able to get your hands on this game digitally on May 8th, 2020 on the PlayStation Vita store in the West. Also, it is coming out in Asia as well at an unspecified date in May 2020. Oh, ho but that's not the only game we're going to be getting here in the West. Re2 will be making its debut very soon. You guys may remember that we got the first read called Read Remastered, which for some reason they dropped the remastered part on this, so I guess it's not remastered. But yes, its sequel is on the horizon. Reed is an adorable creature on an extremely important mission. Rescue the last bits from a dying supercomputer. This extremely hardcore platformer will make you try and try and try again until you beat it. Or give up after three attempts like I do. I played the original game game read remastered and it was a very solid yet pretty difficult game but i enjoyed every minute of it so i have high hopes for this one don't let me down read and you will be able to pick up read 2 on your playstation vita store digitally in the west next week the first week of april 2020 Okay, now for some news over in Asia, because you guys are going to be getting quite a lot this coming week. <laughs> Not that I'm jealous or anything. But I really am, though. Your first game is called Task Force Campus. Isn't that usually spelled with a C? Hmm. Drawing inspiration from the golden age of Japanese shoot-em-ups, Task Force Campus combines retro action with modern conventions, adding new mechanics and randomly generated stages with handcrafted bosses. In a unique twist, the game can be finished, but skilled players will find a way to continue past the ending and claim even higher scores. I, I, I kind of find it funny how it says there the twist is that the game can be finished. Uh, I just have no words. Rhythmatic gameplay and pushing soundtrack work together to create an intense audio-visual experience. And I'm just gonna say right off the bat here, it looks like a lot of stuff to keep up with, even for a shmup game, and that says a lot. My brain can barely process this. But if your brain can process this, and you live in Asia, then be prepared to process this on May 6, 2020. Also, blatant copyright, this looks like Agumon, just thought I'd point that out. But it's not over yet, because you over in Asia are going to be able to enjoy Awesome P, a game that came out a long time ago over here in the West, so I'm kind of surprised it took this long for them to port it over there. But hey, never looked a gift horse in the mouth, and Awesome P is about this. It's about a pea, and he has a face. Oh, and this other stuff as well. Enjoy a classic platformer experience. Help the greedy pea make his way through a string of levels filled with deadly traps and cute but dangerous enemies and collect all coins he can reach. Awesome pea is a classic run and jump platformer where you must jump through many challenging levels and help the greedy pea who is ready to undergo any trials for the sake of gold. As you know, peas tend to do? Dangerous dungeons, deceptively beautiful nature, hidden deadly traps, and many, many coins await you. If you live in Asia and Awesome P looks like something that might be right up your alley, then this game has been available on your digital store, PSN digital store that is, as of May 1st, 2020. And it's supposed to mirror the old black and white Game Boy game. Or the old 
pea green Game Boy system. You know, the one like where if your pea's that green, then you should probably see a doctor and um, yeah. And because I just can't seem to get away from talking about this game, yet have a solemn duty to perform and a mortgage to pay, Twin Breaker, a Sacred Symbols adventure, is going to be winging its way over to Asia on May 8th, 2020. I could have swore it already did, but according to the info I received, it hasn't yet, so I guess it got pushed back, and anyway, it's coming May 8th, 2020 to Asia. Well, I'm officially running out of saliva from this video, but that was quite a lot of news, not bad for the first week of May. And I'm hoping that there's more to come, but which news interested you the most from this video, guys? I would really love to know. We got some very nice looking games here, so I'm sure you have much to say down in the comments section. And let me know what that is. And as always, fellow Vita fans, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to watch this video. It really means a lot to me. Love you all, and I'll see you next time. The following video has been brought to you in part by all of these wonderfully generous people who help make this content possible, including Larry Anderson, Rodrigo Vera, Skullshire Tugel TCG, David Ray, Mario Cruz, Aaron Swanson, Adam Theory, Wendy K, Jale, Heston Joseph, Pierre Sterner, Buzz Sayin, Kevin Enright, Erock, Richard Cruz, Jared Hado, JR, Dennis R. Huggins Jr., Joshua Williams, Kyle Brooks, Adam Sondi, Ruben Gutierrez, Saul Ramirez, Hero Acer, BMF, Phantom XRS, Gutter Drums, Neo Arashi, Reiko Star, and Matt Fox. If you would be interested in supporting the channel and seeing your name on this end screen right here, or if you wish to remain anonymous, that's cool too, then check the links down in the description below. I have numerous ways for you to do so down there. And no, I wasn't joking. I really do think I'm running out of saliva here. Hey, it was on a need-to-know basis, and you guys needed to know, right?